All right, if you missed the part one video on a burnout, really hope that's a squirrel over there. Pretty sure it is. Um, link at the top to that video if you missed it. Part one is important. Part two, I mean, call it what you will. Uh, in the video you saw yesterday, I talked about how I view the concept of burnout, but it's a very interesting like series of events that happened in like the last 12 years that got me to this point. So I remember the first time I played, no, the first time I really had the idea of playing every single day of my only income being poker or my main income being poker i remember it being like 2010 2011 well didn't happen anywhere close to that uh i did move to vegas in 2015. a couple things about that you might think oh so you got to do it in 2015. not really uh my financial state was pretty poor and I was actually doing like almost the opposite of trying to maximize my money. I was just trying to like survive. Uh, I was really just trying to make like $1 more than I spent for the calendar year from mid-March through end of December. And when 2016 started, I wanted to be in like basically the same situation I was in. Like to go broke would have been so much worse than like winning an extra 30 grand above my expenses was good like i just needed to avoid going broke so uh there was that also i didn't get there till mid-march so the first like 10 weeks of the year you know it wasn't quite a full year in that regard third thing was that uh i did enjoy the poker but it was really like the first time in my life that i like decided everything i did all day so i enjoyed the freedom and I also didn't want to play poker, like, you know, have the goal of playing like 10 hours a day. I actually wanted to play like the minimum. One, because the goal was just like survival, not like adding a huge chunk of cash to my net worth. Also because I wanted to do other things. I was still lifting weights. I was still golfing. I was uh, starting to cook a little more. There was a nice kitchen in the house where I was renting a room. Uh, the Mets made the World Series. In 2015, I was just really into watching like college football and pro football. Like there were other things I wanted to do. So I wasn't maximizing hours. I was really like minimizing hours and just enjoying like chunks of the day, like doing things I enjoyed doing. Like finally, like the first time in my life, I didn't have textbooks to read around the clock every day. So in 2015, it really didn't happen either. I did notice after I was looking back at my poker stats on like at the end of December of 2015 that like, wow, I made a solid amount of money and I was like playing the minimum hours to do this. I could definitely add more hours, still golf, still lift weights, like still watch baseball games. And I could have this year plus a good chunk of cash next year. And then to start 2016, I was dedicated to the hours. Uh, I think I was averaging 40 a week, which was a lot for me at the time through like mid April. But then I started preparing for the LSAT, the law school entrance exam. And uh, yeah, so that took up a lot of my time in 2016. And then for like the middle and end of the year, it wasn't just like poker around the clock, focusing on hitting 40 hours a week. So in 2016, it also didn't happen. Then in 2017, I moved for law school. And even though I did maximize like weekends and summers in law school, there were tons of days where like I was just in school and then i was home and that was it so it didn't happen for a few years again and then there was corona i did play a lot at the end of 2020 i did play a lot in 21 it was kind of like broken up in chunks in 21 because i'm going somewhere with this story if you're starting to get a little bored uh in 21 uh man things were closed it was difficult to like do anything like there was some paperwork for my car that normally you would just go to the dmv and the New York DMV is quite the experience because the goal of the people who work there is to absolute de absolutely destroy you mentally and you need to be like five steps ahead of them unless you want to go insane. Well, it was made even more difficult because you couldn't just go in. Uh, so I had to, it took a long time to do some basic stuff 
because they were like limiting how many people can be in the building at once because it was so shortly after the shutdown but in 21 i played but it was like in chunks I, I played and then a few months later i played in oklahoma for like 50 days then i was in vegas and that was the year the wsop was delayed so it started in october i don't like playing in vegas during the wsop so i went to council bluffs for a couple couple weeks i did have plans to go to the southeast for poker and some uh, tornadoes messed up my travel plans and i was just kind of done for the year at the end of october did go to Atlantic City a couple times, but um, it wasn't huge volume. Anyway, didn't really happen in 2021 either. 2022 is finally when it happened. I first had the idea in like 2010, 2011, and then it finally happened in 2022. New Year's Day in my parents' house in New York. End of the day, January 4th. I think technically like 1 a.m. January 5th local time. I was in Vegas. And the whole year, I did start the channel in 2022. Playing wasn't the only thing I had on my plate, but uh it was like the major thing so finally like 11 12 years after i first had the idea i finally got to do it like everything lined up and i got to do it like just play all year it was the most hours i ever played in a year in addition to that i went to a bunch of cities enjoyed my time in california enjoyed my time in uh that was poker related enjoyed my time in north dakota south dakota idaho um, not poker related in the least, but enjoyed my time there going to the state parks and the self-guided tour of Boise State and the, uh, the fair in, uh, Fargo. Really enjoyed that year and I did it, but it wasn't as if like I had the idea to play like full-time hours for a year and then I did it right away. I had the idea and then for the next 10, 11 years, there was plenty of poker involved, but I didn't have that original goal of playing every single day. It took so long to happen. So the point of this is like, if I had the idea to play poker, you know, for a living every single day, and then I got to do it very quickly after, I might have like had the will and like desire to do it for like five to eight years, like the same thing year after year for that long. Because it took so long to do it, like once 2022 was over, I still enjoy playing and I still enjoy having some uh, short-term volume goals, but like, I don't know, it kind of became like one of the last things on my like poker goal list. Like I was terrible in home games when I was young and I got good enough so that I expected to win every time. I was terrible online and then I improved. And I got to the point where I just like expected to win every day. And then Black Friday happened. And cash, live cash in casinos. That was the thing I was best at early on, but still like for years, kept like original hand histories, um, got a lot better. Like after two, three years, then like those first few times I played at Foxwoods and Potawatomi. And I had a lot of goals that got checked off. And like the last one, was like a full-time year. And like a lot of people who play full-time will like have a goal of like 1,500 hours and like miss it by several hundred. It's like, no, I wanted to break 2,000. Came somewhat close in law school, which is amazing because <laughs> there was plenty of time dedicated to school and I still fit in 1,700 hours of poker in 2019. But finally, it was like the main thing on my plate and I broke 2,000 hours and yeah like i said if it had happened so soon after i had the idea i might have really wanted to do that for many many years it finally happened like 11 12 years after i first had the idea so like at this point don't really have the desire or like energy to play like 2000 hour years for like many years in a row like i did it in 2022 if it happens again okay I'm not gonna like have it be the number one focus of my life. I have other ways. I make money now and I have other hobbies now and I have other things that are really in their infancy, but uh, I would like to, like to do them more either for entertainment purposes or income purposes. So yeah, originally yesterday in the video you saw yesterday, I was talking about burnout. I don't know, I, I don't, 
I don't think it's appropriate to use that term when like this is ultimately like 20 years in the making. Like if I played back to back 18 hour days for a challenge and then was exhausted and took three days off and like I could have just played like steadily for five days and got more hours than just 36, you know, 18, 18, zero, zero, zero. Like I would call that burnout. 20 years after I played poker for the first time for money, I don't know. Burnout isn't the appropriate word to me, but uh, yeah, definitely have like less of a desire to like play massive amounts of hours, even though I still enjoy playing and still like count on the money I make from playing. And remember, rice is a spoon food. <laughs>